Hey, what's up? It's Matt with Texas Edge Home Inspections. Come look at this electrical panel with me. Today we're inspecting an older house that has a newer electrical panel. At some point during the age of this house, uh, one of the owners had someone come in here and replace the electrical panel because this is definitely not original to the house. We got a few things going on with it, so come take a look with me. First thing I noticed is these two screws that are missing to hold on the panel interior cover here. These need to be in place so this doesn't just fall off when you open the door. In this case, it's kind of propped up and it's still in place. so. It's okay for now, but I definitely think we should replace those screws and not with sharp point screws. They need to be dull, blunt tip screws. Then the next thing is we have two ACs, right? This, this says that we have two AC systems or, or two, two breakers for the AC system. That's incorrect because this house only has one. But what I don't see here is a dryer, 240 circuit for the dryer. These are both 30 amp. I figure one of these is for the AC, one of these is for the dryer. Uh, I don't know which one is which, I'll figure that out a little bit later, but at the very least this panel is not labeled correctly. After removing the panel cover, we discover a few more items here, and so I'm going to see what I can go over here. First and foremost, uh, we have grounds and neutrals that are sharing a bus bar, which is good. This is the first means of disconnect. They should be sharing a bus bar, uh, but we do have neutrals that are doubled up, and that's just unnecessary. It's not up to today's standards, and we have plenty of room to put them elsewhere, and so we'd li like to have those not doubled up there. Uh, but also, we don't have a bonding screw bonding this cabinet to the uh, grounding equipment, and so we really need, that That screw should be right there where that open hole is, and we really should see that there. And here's another thing. Oftentimes, we'll have the ground wires run to a separate bus bar that's attached to the box itself. And then this bonding screw would bond the cabinet itself to the ground, uh, but also you know the neutrals because this is attached to the neutrals, but I digress. What I'm getting at here is that we have run the, the, the ground rod is right here. We've run that wire up here and it's isolated over here on its own. And so we have really nothing tying that to the neutrals. Where this really should have gone is probably right here, um, or at least onto this bus bar where all of that would have been tied in together and we'd have a direct path uh, for fault current. Uh, at this point, uh, we can either do that or connect you know, this grounding bus to the neutral bus with a jumper here that would be acceptable as well. So the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that we have these white neutral wires here used on the 240 volt circuits. You can see that they have taken a marker and labeled this one, but these are not labeled. And well, I'll take that back. We've got a little red tape on one of them back here. One of them doesn't have anything, but they really should be identified enough here so that you can see it, uh, that they are actually hot wires that are being used for these 240 volt circuits. Here's the next thing I want to show you. All this side, actually everything in this box that's not 240 volt is on 20 amp breakers. And if you look closely, these look like 12 gauge wires. Um, but if you look over here, these don't look like 12 gauge wires. Uh, and so, and that's on every one of them here. You can see they all look about the same size. They're all 20 amp breakers. They're all on the same size wire. But if you compare this wire to that wire, they just don't quite look the same. These, these 14 gauge wires should be on a 15 amp breaker, not on a 20 amp breaker. Uh, just like this is set up correctly, but this, oh, these over here are not. And so we're gonna verify that. Uh, but I mean, I can tell, but I just wanna show you how I verified that and also how I would take a picture of that in the report. These are wire gauge testers. They are specifically designed to be able to slide over the insulation on wires. They do not work on every wire, okay? That is true. But uh, they are specifically designed to slide over the insulation and give you an idea and be able to better capture a picture uh, to, to uh, give some visual representation whenever you have a discrepancy like this. And so here we got the 14, right? 14 is what we should, or well, I take that back, 12 is what we should have on these 20 amp breakers. And you can see if I use the 12, it slides right over, now here we go. Yeah, it slides right over that wire perfectly, but the 14 gets hung up and does not slide on it. So what I wanna show you over here is that the 14 gauge goes right over this wire on these 20 amp breakers over here on the left side. And that is the case on every one of them. Now you do wanna be very careful whenever you're using these, you don't want to jostle the wire in any way. So go slow. Uh, but these can be a really cool tool, especially for a newer inspector to be able to determine, or a newer electrician to be able to determine the wire size. Uh, you can, there's various ways that you can do this. If you can see the jacket, you can verify the wire size, but sometimes you got a spaghetti bowl of stuff going on in here, it's hard to tell. So these can be a really cool tool for that. And obviously whenever I 
do this and take a photograph of that in my report. It shows the breaker and the wire and a real clear representation of what is wrong. Also want to talk about this bushing where this the uh, service wires are coming in here. This is metal and this needs to be bonded as well. And so there needs to be a bonding lug uh, attached to that and tie that in with all of the grounds as well. Other than those items, the box is in pretty good shape. None of these are serious red flags. I mean, probably the most uh, serious item would be the breakers that are oversized for the wire. Uh, the reason why that's a problem is because it will allow too much current to get to that wire and could essentially melt the wire causing a fire. And so we really would like to see those changed out to 15 amp breakers where they're appropriate. Uh, there are scenarios where a higher breaker can go on a wire. Usually uh, it's involving refrigeration or, or AC equipment, um, but that is not what's going on here. These just need to be changed. Really overall, what we're doing as inspectors is we're just gonna recommend that a licensed electrician come and evaluate the entire panel. And we're gonna put all of our specific items, we're gonna notate all of those in there and that way uh, an electrician can look at the report and kind of see what they're working with here. But overall, it just needs some work. It needs, somebody needs to come out here and just straighten out a few things. It's good that the electrical equipment has been upgraded, but there's still a few things that need to be done here. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. I got more to inspect, so I'm gonna get back after it. Give me a call so I can inspect your next house. Bye now.